Hello, you wonderful creative human being. It's Mrs. Talbert, your fairy art mother, coming to you with a super exciting, fun, and energized lesson. Today, we are gonna be learning about lines, vertical lines, diagonal lines, horizontal lines, lines, loop-de-loop -loop lines, and we are gonna create a 3D paper sculpture. Yes. Now, let me tell you what we have in store. So we are going to make our very own 3D paper sculpture. And I'm excited because it's almost like a fantasy land. I, I imagine a little person, like a little Lego person or a little fairy person or a little animal. And they this is their like fantasy land, like a, a amusement park almost. And with slides, it's almost like a skate park. And so I want you to use your imagination. And I'm gonna show you several different types of techniques that we can use paper with, cut strips of paper, um, to really make our sculptures pop. And in fact, I got so inspired that I even was designed, I, I even got really cool, I don't know if you can tell, but I even made me a little hat. What do you think? Fry tea for my Mad Hatter's convention? What do you think? It's my creativity hat. And there's lots of swirlies and all kinds of things with it. I think it's a work of art, darling. Anyway, I did this with a paper plate. So you can create your own hat. You can create your own sculpture. But let me share with you who inspired this lesson. Now, we know what is the tiniest little line. What is the what is the um, the tiniest line there is? It is called a dot. And in the seven elements of art, we talk about a line is a dot taking a walk. Yes, and we are gonna really take our lines uh, for a nice walk. Today, boys and girls, we are going to be inspired by the wonderful and wacky artist Alexander Calder. Alexander Calder was born in 1898 and died in 1976 and lived in Philadelphia. He was an inventor and actually invented the mobile. The mobile is a kind of sculpture where the pieces hang by the wire and they actually used, them, used to use them above baby cribs to keep them, you know, occupied. It's kind of a kinetic sculpture. He he also made huge, gigantic sculptures that would sit in front of buildings that are that are in parks that are all around the world, and they're called stabiles. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to create our own 3D stabile, uh, but it's going to be paper. And he was also known for his wonderful wire art. He loved to make toys and actually went to school for, to be an engineer. And he was a draftsman, and but his heart was in art. So let's get inspired and get ready to create a fabulous 3D paper-inspired stable. He also created stable. What they call stabiles. Can you say that? Stabiles. And a stabile is a three-dimensional sculpture. They're, they were huge. And that's what we're going to do. We're, they can be like this too. These are stabiles too. So we're going to literally take a two-dimensional piece of paper, right? Just a normal two-dimensional piece of paper and create a three-dimensional sculpture. So that's what a sculpture is. It's three-dimensional because you can see it from three different sides. Oh, up dimension width length all that stuff so that's what we're gonna do um in, in the elements of art so are you ready let's go ahead and take a deep inhaling breath in exhale out get those little wiggly creative fingers ready because we're gonna be twisting and a turning swooping and a whooping um whirling and all of that good stuff and so we're definitely gonna need our fingers now let's do our mantra, shall we? So our mantra for the day is, I am, say it with me, I am creative, I am positive, I'm positive. I am mindful, that means I'm focused and centered, and I am an artist. And an artist thinks out of the box, 
they problem solve, they let their um, unleash their imaginations, and they take the joy journey and the adventure of art. So meet me at the table and I will show you. Oh, I, actually, I'll show you what you need right now. How about that? Okay, the first thing we're going to need is a base for our sculpture. A base for our sculpture. So you could say, well, Mrs. Talbert, I want to make one of those cool little hats you made. So that's just a paper plate and I colored it, right, with some cool designs. Yeah. Okay, so you can do a paper plate or you might have a leftover like pizza um, cardboard thingy, any kind of cardboard will do. You can color this, you can wrap it with tin foil to make it shiny and metallic, right? The possibility is all endless. Or you could get just a black piece of paper like I did here. And I used white crayon to create some lines on my black paper. So you could just use black paper or you can use construction paper or scrapbooking paper. But we're gonna need a sturdy piece kind of to hold the weight of um, all of our pieces that we're gonna create on this, okay? This one's kind of floppy, but we'll work with it. You know, sometimes you just gotta work with what you gotta work with, right? All right, next thing that we're gonna need is we're gonna need several strips of construction paper or cardstock. So what I did was I went ahead and cut into strips um, about one inches. It doesn't really matter. You can have some thick, you can have some thin. Um, you can make them all different sizes if you want. And we're gonna go ahead and get all the different colors. So again, cardstock or uh, construction paper, right? Or you can even do painted paper where you just paint any kind of regular paper and do all kind of designs on them and then cut them. So let your imagination soar there. So we're gonna need paper. Now we're also gonna need something to stick it down with. So your sticking agent can either be some glue or a glue stick. So regular glue or glue stick. Okay, so we need our sticking agent. And we're gonna need some scissors, right? So we'll need some scissors. And then if you want it to color or accentuate your masterpiece, then you could, like I put some dots on here, or you might want to outline your, um, you know, your pieces here. You can do that as well. So again, you decide. Um, and we need, I, I'm going to actually use some markers because I'm going to decorate the base of my playground or my paper sculpture. So this is gonna be called a stable. It's a 3D paper sculpture, okay? So that's what we're gonna need. All right, artists, meet me overhead and let's get started at creating our stables, stables. All right, artists, here we go. Let's have some fun today. So we've got our glue, we've got our um, white crayon or something to color our base with. We've got our scissors. We've got all of our strips of paper. Some of them I actually connected to make these little short strips a little bit longer. So for some of the longer pieces, I also even colored some of them with, you know, designs. So you decide um, how you you want to um, decorate your paper and the size of the width of the paper. But let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we've got our 2D platform, and this is kind of like, mm, I found a little piece of black paper that was kind of like scraps. So I'm just gonna use, recycle my paper. It's not perfect, it's all good. Like I said, you can use construction paper, you can use cardboard, or even a paper plate if you wanna make one of those fancy cool hats that I did. Now, the thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you all kinds of different ways we can embellish our platform or um, fold and crease and and create different um, textures with our lines and things. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a super easy. Let's start with the easy and then we'll work our way up to the fancy. So I've got my strip of, of um, cardstock. OK, and I'm going to start with an arch. So just literally kind of curving my paper right? And in order for it to stick to my base, I've got to create little feet. Yes, not for walking, but for sticking. Boom, like gymnastics, they stick that landing. So what we're going to do is take the bottom of our construction paper 
and then bend it, press, 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 press. And now I've got a little tab or what I like to call a little foot. Hello. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and notice I can tab my feet back like this. I'm going to tab this one back too, like this. Or I could have folded it. I could fold it in so I can have where it's like almost like little penguin feet, right? Like they're, you know, walking out or I can walk it in. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take my glue, just give it a little shake. And one dot is a lot. And that's really a lot of glue. So I'm going to go ahead and tickle the feet. Hello, little feet. Tickle, 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 tickle. Now, this is a very, um, this is a very uh, short little arch. So you can make big arches and then arches that cross each other. But I just want to show you the um, technique first. And we're going to build, build, build. Now, when you put down your feet, you want to count. You want to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So up to 10 at least. And of can of course, I've got a little slide on there. So 10, press it, little glue, and that will do. All right. Now, the second one. So that's the arch. The next, um, the, and when you get glue on your hands, you're, you're probably like, oh, glue. That's okay. When it dries, it just rolls right off. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to create um, a teepee, a teepee with your line. So I'm going to take my um, line my strip of paper. Okay. Here's the same strip of paper and I'm going to fold the edges together and I'm just going to flatten them. I'm going to flatten them. I got some glue on there. Ugh. Okay. Got some glue on there. I'm rolling my glue off. Flat, 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 pinch, pinch, pinch. And guess what? Instead of a round arch, now I have gotten like a point. So it looks like a V or an A, or I like to say it looks like a TB. So again, We'll put our feet on there so that we'll have a place for it to land and then we'll stick it down in a, in a minute, okay? So I don't know where I want it yet. So I'm gonna make my body parts first and then I'm gonna arrange it on the paper. So I've got my arch. Now, I've got my teepee. Yes, now we get to make a spiral. Ooh, this is one of my favorites. So in order to make a spiral, to make a really cool spiral, you can see this is a long sheet of paper. I'm going to take my crayon or I could take a pencil or a pen and I am going to take the edge of this, pinch it over, okay? And then I'm going to start rolling really tight. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Oh yeah. It's like a fruit roll up almost, right? So I'm rolling it tight. I'm pinching it. I'm rolling it tight. Now when I curl my hair, I use a hot curler to do this. And I'm like, I flat iron or curl my hair. Okay, so I've got it like this. And then now I've got this really cool kind of spiral, right? So I've got a spiral. Um, we can call this a coil or a pigtail. But it's very springy. Boing, boing, boing. Right? So I love that. And if I really want it even tighter, I could... I could make it thinner and it could look like hair. So it's a really fun, it's a fun way. I'm going to put my little foot on there just for later. So there's our spiral. Okay. The next one I have is called my loop de loop. Now, when I want to show you something really quickly, when I talk about all of these different designs, remember the first thing that I did, I'm going to kind of show you on my paper. The first thing I did was I did a what? An arch. So you could take a crayon and actually put the designs um, of your three-dimensional paper sculpture, or you could color it or jewel it, whatever you want. You can be creative. But I did the arch. The next thing I did was the TP. So that was up, and it's almost like a zigzag, right? I did, uh-oh, my passion. I just like broke my crayon. So I did like a TP, which is almost like a zigzag. Okay, and the next one I did was my loop or spiral. So I'm going to do a spiral. It's almost like curls, right? Like that. And then now I'm going to do a loop diddy loop. Oh, yeah. So a loop diddy loop um, is I'm going to take, uh -huh, if 
like a magician. Oh, I'm going to take one strip of paper. Watch me. Yay. Okay, I'm going to take one strip of paper. And all I'm going to do is pretend this is like a little snake. Hello. And this is the head of the snake. And I'm going to dip it down and around and come back up and dip it down and around and come it up. And so I've got this cool spiral now that I can stick on my paper and I can even connect the spirals up to other things. That's the cool thing. Your feet don't have to be grounded necessarily to the paper. You can actually connect your feet onto other parts of your structure or your um, sculpture. Okay, so that's called a loop. Did a loop. All right. Now, so you can also make a zigzag. And this is super cool. It's super easy. Um, all you're going to do is you're going to take your paper like this, right? And you're going to fold it back like a square. And you pinch. Use your little Pac-Man or alligator pinchers. Pinch, 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 pinch. So I've got a fold here, right? Now I'm going to fold it back, backwards. It's doing a back bend. So it's like touching his toes and now it's going to go back. Right, so I'm just folding it back. And then I'm gonna fold it forward again. Boom, pinch, 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 right? And fold it back. Hey, there we go. We fold it forward, press, press. We fold it back, press, press. We fold it forward, press, press. We fold it back, press, press. Now, practice makes progress. There is no such thing as perfection in art. And now we've got this super cool um, accordion. You know those musical instruments that you play? I love those. Okay, so it goes back and forth. And they all also can be little stairs that lead uh, to another mountain or arch boop, 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 for your imaginary little person. Okay, so this is super cool. So those are, um, that's the same technique I use when I'm making fans. So that's the zigzag, right? Now, the other thing that we can do is we can create cylinders. I don't know if you've ever been when you're at the park, you know, and they have those tunnels. So I can take a sheet of like a half a sheet of paper, right? It can be any size if you want. And I can glue all of this to make a long cylinder. So that's what a cylinder looks like. It's round, okay, but it's 3D, so it's got a width. It's got a length and a and a and a and a um and a height. So I can either put this, paste this down like this, or maybe I want to cut a a window in here and create something on the side like that looks like a rocket or a chute coming out of it and paper exploding out of it. So again, that is a cylinder. Okay. The next thing that you can do, which I love, is a cuff. Okay, it's like a bracelet. So that's where these little things, these little round um, objects uh, that I created, those are, um, they look like little bracelets though, little armbands, right? So all you're gonna do for that is you're going to take your paper, right? Put a little glue down. Hold on, let me give it another strip. So I'm gonna take my glue, a dot will do. Here we go, boom. And then all I'm gonna do is fold my paper in. And how many seconds am I gonna hold? I am gonna hold 10 seconds. So squeeze one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I count it kind of fast, huh? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two. Okay, so I let it sit right there. Now I can put it on top of something. I can add, oh, I need more time. See, it didn't hold, gotta hold it more. Um, I can put it on top of something. I can leave it like this. So you can decide what you want to do with your circle or your um, cuff. I'm calling this a cuff, okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is teach you the swirly whirly. What is a swirly whirly? Sounds like a spiral. Well, I love roller coasters. Can you tell? I do. I love roller coasters. And so I want you to pretend, like I said, like this is an amusement park, but a swirly whirly, let me show you, is where you take a piece of paper. Okay, now we're gonna get fancy. Are you ready to get fancy with me? I hope so. Let me do it on this one so you can really see. Okay, I have a couple swirly whirlies I wanna show you. 
different patterns. So what we're gonna do, here's an example of one, is you take your paper, and I like to cut a square, okay? And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut now a circle. If you want a, you know, a really good circle, you would take something and trace it. I'm just freehanding it right now. And you can make your swirly whirlies as big or as little as you want. This is pretty big, so I'm gonna cut it down a little bit. Okay, so I've got a circle. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and cut into my circle, and I'm gonna pretend like this is a snake, and I'm gonna just go around, and I'm just gonna keep, you see I'm taking my thumb and I'm turning the paper and I'm turning my scissors. And as soon as I get, I just turn and keep turning and keep turning and I'm doing a spiral, right? I'm doing a spiral turn. Like, oh, as soon as I get to the edge, I'm turning, I'm turning, I keep turning, I keep turning until I come on and I'm off. And then, so see, it looks like that. But then when I stretch it out, it looks like a curly fry. Yes, a curly fry. So this is super cool. And in fact, I think I have, I took a swirly whirly on one of these for the top of my hat. So you can, you know, kind of wind them up and boing, boing. Can you tell I like things that go boing, boing? I like a lot of springs. Okay, now the other thing you can do is the same thing. Instead of cutting a circle, you can do a square. So if you wanted to do a, um, you know, a round and around, a spiral uh, kind of cut, you could. It doesn't have to be circular. It can actually be square, which is super cool, okay? So that's your swirly whirly. So, so far we've done our arch, we've done our TP, right? We've done our spiral where we wrapped it around, okay? We've done a loop-de-loop, -loop, which is just a little whoop, boom, right? We've done a, a zigzag. We've done a cylinder, which is a piece of, I didn't even glue that cylinder, but I don't think I'm gonna put a cylinder on mine, but here we go. We just take a piece of paper and glue it like that to make a like almost like a funnel, not a funnel, but a tunnel. Okay, so, right? Um, we've made a cuff, which is that little handy thing. Now I get to show you the, uh, the Masterpiece uh, Spider. Now, this one, oh my goodness. This one, uh, Alexander Calder, this is, this is like his. Like, this is the one that is most like his. So, and again, you can even decorate them. So these are little structures, and I call them spiders because they kind of look like spiders, right? But what we're gonna do with these they actually stand up. So let me see if I can find one that will stand for you. So I'm gonna show you how to cut them out. And you basically go back and forth and back and forth and they stand and they look like a spider when they stand. They are so cool. It almost looks like this fancy um, jungle gym. You know, that something you would find in a really cool park, um, you know, and have fun for days. So you can either get index cards and you can make them different shapes. So you can do zigzags or you can do, um, you know, curls. And the key is the cutting and the, um, the folding back and forth. Okay. So we can add those as well. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do right now. So I'm going to take my sheet of paper. Okay. And I'm gonna show you, again, like you can even use little tiny ones. Like I did a little tiny one on an index card. And again, you know, they're like little bitty spiders and then you just separate them to stand. So here's how to make one of those cool things. You take any size paper. Now I like, I don't want a big paper. I want it to be, you know, like half a sheet or, you know, I don't want it to be too big. And you're gonna fold it in half. Okay, so take any size sheet of paper and fold it in half. Okay, so here we go. Looks like a card, doesn't it? Right. Now, once you fold it in half, you can take a pencil and draw it out, but I'm going to show you what we're going to do. Basically, this is our, our guide, okay? I want you to pretend there's an imaginary line right here. Now, like I said, if you want to actually draw it, you can. You can draw it on your sheet, like this, 
right? That's our guideline, but you'll have to erase it if you do that, so, which is fine. And then what you're gonna do is you can just kind of draw straight out and come out and then draw another line straight out and come down and another line and another line. They're almost like half a rainbow, right? And again, like I said, you can make this, you can make this outside line straight, right? Like this, I'll do it for you. I'm gonna go, yeah. Now this outside line is my top line. So I'm gonna go all the way in, but that's the only one I'm gonna cut all the way to the end. Everything else, I'm gonna stop right at this imaginary line. So I could make this like a zigzag, or I could keep it straight. So it's, it just depends on how you want your spider or your structure, the feel to it, right? Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and do my first arch. So I'm not gonna follow that. I'm gonna kind of go above that. Since I'm gonna erase it anyway, I can change it. Now see how I stop it right there? I stopped it right there, about a half an inch um, from the center. And then I'm gonna go and do another cut. Right? And again, you can you can make them zigzag. I'm just doing mine just so that you can kind of get a feel for what I'm doing. Okay, and here, and maybe I'll do one more. And again, the key is stopping it right there. So if I open this up, it looks like this, right? Okay, so it's, it's symmetrical. So it's the same as on this side as on this side, like a butterfly wing, yay. But the key with this is, and here's the key, you ready? Is the folding. So I'm gonna fold this leg back and this leg forward. This spider leg goes back this spider leg goes forward. So I alternate it back, forth, back, forth. He's very flexible. He's been taking spider yoga. Okay, now I'm gonna do the other side. If this leg is back, then this leg is gonna be forward. This leg is back. This leg is gonna be forward. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spot. Okay, I'm sorry. I had a flashback of my childhood. So now, check it out. I've got all of these spider legs and I went backward, forward, backward, forward, backward. And so now I get to just kind of adjust them and arrange them and they sit up super cool. So they sit up and they make this really cool, um, I don't know if you guys can see. Let's see. I'm scared I'm going to lose you. But you see how it sits up? Super cool, right? So again, you can do different ones. Like you can do, you can dot them, right? And outline them for a kind of like a pop art feel, which I really like. Um, or maybe you want to do a line like that. And it's uh, almost looks like an animal of some kind. So, okay, boom, right like that. So you decide how you want to do your spider, or even if you do want to do a spider on your playground. On my two, on my two playgrounds, I don't have a spider on them. I filled my playgrounds with other things that brought me joy. So let's go ahead and start adding all of your um, your paper to your playground, okay? Let's do it together. So grab your goodies and let's start your body parts, okay? Have fun, guys. We're gonna watch Tickle the Feet, remember? Tickle, tickle. Put the tabs on, boom. Boom. A dot will do. And if you want to start putting designs on them like dots, color your pieces first and then go ahead and secure them down. I'm tickling my feet. Here we go, I'm gonna do another arch. Hold it down 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Because I count it too fast, I'm gonna do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay. And I've got all my swirls now. So now look, check this out. You can decide to connect different pieces 
And again, you can use a, a glue stick if you want. That might work better. But you can say, oh, okay, I want to go ahead and put my stairs here and then connect it to my arch. You can start to build up your structure, right? Again, let your imagination flow and then see where you need to create more. Um, if, like if something's blank over here, maybe you want to fill up that space. Right, so again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, I am not gonna like the look of this showing, so I'm probably gonna put a circle or something on top of that, kind of like this, maybe. Right, once it dries, and I'm talking, so I'm not being patient with it. But okay, so we've got my spirals, I've got little pigtails. I'm going to do some loop-de-loops. Now, I want to show you one more. Well, no, it's okay. That's on my other video where I talk about making paper flowers. So you can even do these super cool um, flowers to put in your paper sculpture. But we'll save that for another day. Or you can look down at my um, at, at some of my other videos. And please subscribe, like, yes. I, I never say to do that, and I forget that, yeah, please, subscribe, like. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my colors and have fun.
All right, so we have our first sculpture and I could just keep going and going and going and it's looking pretty cool. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, we've got some slides and some jumps and some stairs and some loop-de-loops and it's looking like a super cool paper sculpture. And I just kind of wanted to share with you how the other one would look with, with the spiders. So when you're doing your spiders, you can, um, if you want to just keep them secure, remember, you fold down your feet and you would just arrange them. Just keep moving them until they're balanced, until you feel, okay, they're kind of balanced, right? And then make sure you put feet on, on your structure so that they can stand nicely, okay? So there's one. Let me see. All right. And then again, you want to make sure that you have folded them. There's two. Right. And then um, you can do, I would do a smaller one or a different color to put them all down. Right. So these are very, um, you can do like Matisse shapes or um, these are very organic shapes. So we've pretty much, we've used a lot of the elements of art, right? We have used line. We have used shape. We have used form. We've used color. Um, we've even added, well, kind of like a little texture to it with that zigzag, right? That little pointy, pointy. Um, and we have used space. So we, we've, we've done a lot. So have fun creating your paper sculptures. And I do have a corny corn corn ball joke for you. Okay, so here is the corny corn corn ball joke. Now, it's, I don't know if you guys, do you know what parallel lines are? Parallel lines look like this, right? They're straight lines or, you know, horizontal lines, but they're right next to each other. They're literally like right next to each other. So parallel lines have so much in common. It's a shame that they will never meet each other. But um bump. I know that was pretty bad. Okay, I get it. I know. So until we meet again, wait, one more, one more. Did you hear the one about the artist who went on and on and on? Kind of like Mrs. Talbert. Well, the thing is, he didn't know where to draw the line. But um, bum. All right, until we meet again, happy artists. Enjoy creating, spread love, spread kindness, keep breathing, and keep dreaming. Take care.